Hello and greetings, beloved. Good to be with you tonight. Uh, thankful for the chance to be in this uh, special season. I know that many of you will have turned in tonight, tuned in tonight, largely to see the world famous uh, car church Christmas decorations, which are here. And I have to tell you that uh, putting together these car church decorations is certainly um, a little less stressful for me than it used to be to do decorations in the churches that I've pastored before. But I'm so thankful to be with you tonight. And we're celebrating tonight particularly because Rebecca, our daughter, has given birth to our first granddaughter today at 2.30 uh, p.m. And, and she's so faithful, she just posted the scriptures tonight from the hospital. I love you, Rebecca. Blessings. So we have a new baby uh, granddaughter born today on this special day. So this Christmas, we've already got all the present we need. Uh, and we're so thankful. So we bless you tonight. Uh, Patty is not with me tonight because she's at home. Uh, having uh, We've been praying today for Becca. Love you too, baby. And so let's have a word of prayer tonight and just open open this evening with prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful for the safe and precious birth of our first granddaughter, Eleanor Roberts. We speak blessings over her in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm thankful for everyone this Christmas season as we are coming together around your word. So many uh, distressing and so many uncertain things happening in the world. But Lord, I'm so thankful that we're building our lives on a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And we stand upon that kingdom with hope in our hearts, full of joy and expectation, Lord, because we know that your kingdom is forever. So speak to us tonight through your word. Teach us more about what it really means to live this life, this life of Christ, how to cooperate with you. I pray tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want us to turn tonight in the book of Matthew. We're going to start tonight in Matthew chapter 5. And our topic tonight is a shining light. And I've, I've been really uh, excited to share this message tonight. I just have a sense of expectation in my heart this evening. And I just pray that you'll really open your heart because <clears throat> this passage and the, these things we're going to talk about tonight, once again, just re reiterate so beautifully the pervasiveness of this concept of Christ living his life through us uh, throughout the scriptures, throughout the New Testament, how this is really the message is the life of Christ in us and learning how to cooperate with that life. And so, you know, as we're celebrating uh, the fact that we have a, a new grandbaby uh, and new life has come, we're going to talk about life and light tonight and how these two things go together. So to begin with, let's look here at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. And here's Jesus speaking in the red part of your Bible. It says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, this is a command of Christ, again, in the red part of your Bible, which means it's the words of Jesus. And he spoke these words. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, when we read that verse of Scripture, there's several questions uh, and several uh, revelations that come just out of this single verse. Powerful, really insightful things. First of all, there's two ways we can translate or we can interpret, I should say, this word, let your light so shine. We could say so shine means shine so bright, and certainly that's one interpretation. Let your light so shine, shine so bright before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. But another interpretation of that so shine would be let your light shine in such a way as. So one thing we can think about is it's about a, the brightness of the shining, 
But another way to think about it is it's about what it is or how we approach this concept of shining. Let your light shine in such a way. Let it so shine. In, in other words, shine in such a way before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. So first of all, it's maybe not just about the brightness of our shining from our interpretation, but it's about the way in which we shine. Let our light shine in such a way that the works that come out of us cause God to be glorified. Now, that's another aspect of Revelation here. Apparently, if our light is so shining before men, in other words, shining in such a way as it should be, then the works that come forth are actually going to bring glory to the Father. <clears throat> so here's the question that comes up for me when I read this. Let your light so shine before men. The question is, okay, well, what is my light? If I'm to let my light so shine or shine in such a way before men that they see my good works and they glorify my Father who's in heaven, then I need to know something. What is my light that is supposed to shine in such a way? Well, you know, I think that from our human perspective, our tendency might be to think that when it says, let your light shine before men, it's talking about us, you know, about, you know, here I am. These are my giftings, my abilities. These are my aspirations, my dreams. These are the, the contributions that I can make. These are my particular aptitudes and skills. And I might begin to think that what I need to do is I just need to turn the light on, turn it up bright, you know, be all that I can be. And let my light shine. Let all my skills, my abilities, my talents, my, you know, all of my aspirations, let those just shine brightly. And then at the end of my life, when, when my bright light has shone, then, you know, people will say, wow, praise God for that guy's life. He was a great guy. But maybe there's a, an important thing for us to understand about this that is at the heart of all the things that we constantly are talking about. Maybe that the light that he's speaking about here is not a light that comes from us, but a light that comes through us. Let's see if we can understand what is this light that we're supposed to let so shine before men, either shine so brightly before men or shine in such a way before men that the works that come forth cause the Lord to be glorified. Well, let's look, for example, at the book of John. And see if we can figure out what this light is that is supposed to shine. Well, in the book of John, and looking in chapter 1, it says in verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And then he says this in verse 4. Listen to this. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Apparently, there is a connection between the light that is supposed to shine and the life of Christ. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. By the way, in verse 9 of chapter 1, he, he even expands upon this idea. In verse 9, of John 1, he says, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. You know, if there's one thing we learn as we begin to understand how to interpret Scripture, is we begin to learn that we have to define things the way God defines them. For example, the Bible says that you and I, before we accept Christ and His life comes inside of us, that we are dead in our sins and trespasses. Now, we considered ourselves alive. We had a intellect, we had emotions, we had will, we had passions and desires and appetites, but according to the Lord, we were dead. That's why Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, because apparently what we defined as life was something God did not view as life. The life that he came to give us was his own life, eternal life. 
because natural life divorced from eternal life in God's eyes is not life at all. Well, in the same way, we might say, well, let my light so shine before men. And I define the light that is going to so shine before men as being me, Mike Atkins, or you. Be my skill, my ability, my strength, my, uh, you know, ingenuity, my, my creativity. Be about what I can shine. And, and so as a result, people say, well, you know, that guy was really a shining light. But we have to define the light in the same way we define life by the way God defines it. And what does God say about light? God says, in Christ was life, and that life... Zoe is the Greek word, the eternal life, the life that God himself has. That life is the light of men. That was the true light, he tells us, which gives light to every man coming into the world. So apparently when we start to read this verse of scripture in Matthew chapter 5, if we read it just through our own interpretation or based on a kind of a natural viewpoint, if I just said to somebody, hey, shine brightly, you know, they would assume that I mean, you know, just be the best you can be. But now I begin to see that for my light to so shine before men that they see my good works, but they glorify my Father who's in heaven. Apparently, this is not about a light that's coming from me. It's about a light that's coming through me. And what is that light? He tells us that light is the life of Christ. In him was life. And that life, the life of Christ in me, is the light of men, the true light. Now when we think in those terms, let's look over at John chapter 8. <clears throat> in John chapter 8, this is before Jesus has, has gone to the Father and sent the, his spirit to live inside of the church. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus is speaking. And Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Here again, he puts life and light together. Without the life of Christ, we do not have life from God's perspective. And without the life of Christ, we do not have light according to God's perspective. So if I'm going to let my light so shine before men, what is my light? In him was life, and that life was the light. And now he tells us, I am the light of the world, and he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So it's his life, the life of Jesus Christ, his resurrection life, alive from the dead, living in us by the power of his spirit. This is the light he's speaking about, not something we produce or manufacture or come up with, but something that comes from him. His life is the light. And if our life, light is going to shine before men, it's the life of Christ that he's speaking of. Look what it says in John uh, chapter 12. <clears throat> in John chapter 12 and verse 35, he continues to expand on this idea. <clears throat> then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk in the light while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. You see, we become sons of light when we become born of the Spirit. By the life of Christ taking up residence inside of our human spirit. Our human spirit made alive, then God's spirit taking up resonance inside of our human spirit causes us to become sons of light because in him was life, and that life was the light of men. I'm telling you, the Lord's word is so rich, so rich. And the message of Christ in us, the hope of glory, 
is so profoundly pervasive throughout the entirety of the revelation of what God's intention always was from Genesis to Revelation, was that we would be containers of his life, and that life in us would be light, and that light would shine in the darkness. And we would become sons of the Lord, sons and daughters of God, by virtue of his life taking up residence inside of us, and then his life would be expressed through us, not us, again, living our life for Christ out of gratitude for what he did. No, it's about Christ living his life through us, in us so that he is glorified by what takes place because he's the one doing the work. We're going to continue to see this. But I want you to see, I, I preach it over and over again from a thousand different directions. As Paul the Apostle said, him we preach. I'm preaching Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's all about him in everything that he might have the preeminence. Everything is of him, for him, and to him. So that in all things, he might be preeminent. Well, if he is the light and his life is the light of men and I follow him that I might become a son of light, now he tells me here that that's the result. I'll come out of darkness and become a son of not light. Now look what he says over in the book of Ephesians. Over in the book of Ephesians now in verse 8 uh, of this fifth chapter. Ephesians 5 and verse 8. Now he says to us, and I think we could all agree, he says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You see, now we're, it's Paul the Apostle. He's writing to the church in Ephesus. Now it's after the time in which Jesus is resurrected from the dead, ascended to the Father, he sent his spirit into our hearts so that we cry, Abba, Father, our spirit bearing witness with his spirit, whether we're sons and daughters of God. So now we have not, we're not just uh, following the light so that we can become sons of light. He says now we are children of light. We are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light. Now he says, look at what he says in verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit. Now what's the fruit of the Spirit? These are the manifestations of the life of Christ in us, through us. These are not things that we're called to manufacture. These aren't things we're called to produce. These are things we're called to bear. Remember, branches don't produce fruit. Vines produce fruit branches bear fruit. The fruit shows up on the branch, but it comes from the vine. Well, he says the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And then look what he says in verse 14. He says, therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So what's he talking about here? Let's go back and review just real quickly. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 gives us a command. Jesus speaking in the red part of your Bible. What does he say? He says to you and to me, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Okay? So then we need to know, what is that light? Is it just about our talents and abilities and skills and capacities? No. The Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verse 4, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That's the true light. Now we see that if we follow Christ, we'll walk in the light, and we have the opportunity to become sons of light. How do we become sons of light? In him was life. That life was the light. When that life gets in me, that light gets in me. So now if my light is going to shine before men, what it really is, is it's the life of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit, the goodness of Christ in me, my hope of glory that is going to be expressed through me 
and then people will see what happens as a result of Jesus living through me, and they'll glorify my Father in heaven. Now, where does glory belong? Glory belongs to the one who's doing the work. If I'm doing the work, then I get the glory. But if Christ is doing the work through me, then the glory will go to God. And that's exactly what he's talking about here. <clears throat> Look what it says over in Philippians. In Philippians, and looking at verse 15 of the second chapter, Philippians chapter 2, and looking at verse 15. I hope you're getting some of this. And there's a point that I'm getting to here in just a few moments to close tonight that I think will be a really rich, wonderful revelation. Here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 15, well, let's look at verse 14. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Okay, there's a, a great revelation already. And then he says, here's why. Verse 15, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God, without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So we shine as lights in the world. Let your light so shine before men. Christ is our light. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. 1 John 5, 11 and 12, this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and that life is in the Son. He who has the Son of God has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. In him was life. That life was the light. That life is in me. Christ is in me. And that life now becomes the light of men. So when I begin to operate and allow Christ to work through me, I shine as a light in the world. There's just a couple of more verses tonight. I want you to look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. <clears throat> and notice what he says. This all puts it together so beautifully. Colossians 1 verse 10. He's praying and he's asking that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. How do we do that? He tells us, verse 11, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power. It's not us producing this life. It's him producing this life in us and expressing it through us. For all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. You see, when we walk worthy of the Lord, what's happening? We're bearing fruit. And where's the fruit coming from? It's coming by the strength of his might and his glorious power working in us and expressing himself through us. Why do I go over and over and over with this? Because here's what I want you to understand and to see. If I try to shine Mike Atkins light, based on my skills, my abilities, my ingenuity, my creativity, based on all that I am, and I decide I'm going to be the one who's going to shine a bright light, and my bright light is just going to be like a shooting star across the sky, and everybody's going to know I was here because I'm going to do all sorts of wonderful, cool things, and I'm going to really make a splash. If that's how I view Matthew chapter 5, let your light so shine before men, and I think it's about my light coming from me, Man, I'm going to miss the whole glory of what this is about. But if I realize that to let my light so shine before men means that my light is Christ, his life in me. And if I let his life out, if I let his life through, if I let his life have control, if I let his life be the the dynamic and the animating power of everything I do, and it flows out of his life, then my light is going to shine before men in such a way that they're going to see the good works of the goodness of the Lord. Remember, there's none good but God. 
And as a result, they're going to glorify God. They're going to say, this guy couldn't have come up with this. Now, he could have come up with that and that and that and that and that. But this could only come from God. This kind of life and fruit and presence and this timing and this sort of uh, expression, it could only come from the Lord, only come from the Lord. And they'll glorify God as a result. Okay, I'm almost finished. I'm going to go just a couple more verses. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, and let's look at chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The Lord wants to solidify this identity that we have in Christ now. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5. He says, You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. We are no longer dead in our sins and trespasses. We've been made alive. How did we get alive? We received eternal life. Who was that life in? The life is in the Son. And what is that life brought to us? Not only has it brought us the very life of God's own Spirit to quicken us and make us alive with the life of, of God himself, but that life is the light of men. And now that that light's in us, we can walk as sons of light. We can be and are children of light. We are no longer sons of the darkness. We're sons of light because his life is in us. So he's telling us, walk as sons of light. And how do we do that? We let his life out. Not by by redoubling the efforts of trying to manage and harness our flesh to act good, but by allowing his life-nourishing sap to produce the fruit of the Spirit through us and let that light shine, and that light is a glory. In 1 Peter, and this is the last verse I want to look at, in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, a familiar passage, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You see, our very purpose for existence has always been from the foundations of our creation. Before we were created, before the heavens and the earth were created, in the heart of God, his intention for us was that we would be temples of his spirit, that we would be containers of his life, that he would put the treasure of his life in the earthen vessel of our uh, cracked pot. And that then the excellency of the power would be recognized as being of God and not of us. So that we would bear the life of Christ and that we would be the instrument through which he expresses himself. And each one of us are a one-of-a-kind instrument. There'll never be another one like us. That's why for my light to shine before men means that Christ takes up residence in me, in my new regenerated human spirit. God's spirit takes up residence, and God's spirit then begins to play the music of the fruit of his character and nature through me in the unique way he's created me to be. But in the same way, music does not come from a violin. Music comes through a violin. If you don't believe that, put a violin down on the table and see what kind of music you get out of it. The, the violin does not produce any music. The violin only can be the place where the music comes through. But the music is produced by the musician. And in the same way, for my light to so shine before men that I, the people that see my life glorify God when they see the good works, God's works happening through me. God gets the glory. And the result is that the music doesn't come from me. It comes through me. 
as the master musician plays his song through my life. You know, that's why the Bible says that we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he has prepared in advance to do through us. For it is God who is at work within us, both to will and to do, according to his good pleasure. You know what's wondrous about this? Is that when I finally figure out that God doesn't really need me to live my life for him, any more than a, than a musician needs a violin to try and produce music. If a violin is trying to produce music while the musician is trying to play through it, it's a cacophony. The violin is not needed to produce the music. The violin is needed to be placed in the hands of the musician so that the musician can play the concerto through the violin. And this is exactly what we were created to be. We were created, you know, in, in the same way a violin has all of these beautiful pieces and parts. It has the scroll, it has the, the neck, it has, you know, all of the strings and all of these beautiful parts. We have been created with all of these beautiful parts and yours are very different than mine and mine are very different from yours and there'll never be another instrument like you or like me ever created. But we were not created to be an entity into and unto ourselves. We were created to be the instrument through which God revealed himself. And we are best and most perfectly in line with our ultimate destiny and purpose when we yield to that life. Let me just give you in closing one simple story. I remember many, many years ago I was uh, at a, uh, it was a, um, a coffee house. And, you know, I play guitar and I write some music and I sing some songs. And this was many years ago, before I was married, which is 40, over 40 years ago. And I was at this coffee house one night and I remember sitting there because there were a couple of other musicians who were going to play before me. And uh, so one by one, they got up and played. And man, after I listened to them play, I thought to myself, Lord, I ought to just slip out of here. These guys were so good, so gifted, had such beautiful voices, such great musicians. And I kind of felt, you know, intimidated by the fact that I was, you know, I just wasn't at that skill level. But I had committed to be there. And as I was sitting there, I remember just stopping and whispering a prayer. I said, Lord, I know I'm not as good as these guys are. And I know that I don't have the skill that they have, but I'm here and I'm available. And if you can use me, Lord, I just pray that you'd use me. And one of the first times in my life I really began to understand this, the Holy Spirit spoke something into my heart. And he said, and I didn't see it in these terms, but essentially this is what he was saying. He was saying, Mike, I'm not asking you to shine your light. I'm asking you to let me shine mine. I don't need your skill and your ability. What I need is your availability. And something in my spirit felt a peace come over me. And I got up and I shared, you know, wow, what a wonderful night we've had and how precious and what a blessing to hear these wonderful gifted musicians tonight. And I said, you know, normally I'd get up here and apologize for what you're about to hear, but I'm not going to do that because the Lord has put me here and I believe there's a reason. And so I, I said, I'm going to sing a few songs I've written. I just want you to take your eyes off of me. Forget I'm even here. Close your eyes. Let's just enter into the presence of the Lord and I'm just going to sing a few songs here tonight. And off I went. And one of the songs I sang, it's the word said, If I had a mind for the Spirit, I wonder what wonders I'd see. Maybe a brand new creation living his life out through me. And as I began to sing, I just felt the presence of the Lord filling me. And when I got finished with that song, I looked out and I noticed there was one person in the back. They, their head was down. And I didn't know, I thought, maybe they thought, oh, Lord, this is so bad. I wish I could put my fingers in my ear. But I just continued on. At the end of the evening, they came up to me and they said to me, I got to tell you something. I was listening to all the music tonight, and they're wonderful musicians. But the words, she didn't say the voice or the music. <laughs> she said the words of this song 
really spoke to me so deeply and something began to happen in my heart. Maybe a brand new creation living his life out through me. And all of a sudden, I realized it wasn't about the quality of my voice and it wasn't even about my skill as a guitar player. It was the words that touched her heart and brought her along the way. And I thought to myself, what a glorious thing. Sometimes what we think is so important is so meaningless. And sometimes something that we may even overlook is at the very heart of what God wants to do. You see, if we can understand, if you and I can understand that our purpose is not to let our light, our skill, our ability so shine before men, but to let our light, which is Christ himself, in him was life, that life, that life, his life is the light. Let his life, his life, his life become the light that so shines before us, that shines before us in such a way that it shows good works that can only be God doing the work. And we don't get the credit. They glorify our Lord, which is in heaven. That gal didn't say to me, thank you so much for your beautiful voice and your incredible playing. She said, you know, the words that were in that song, God spoke to me through them. This is really what it's all about. And let's close in prayer tonight. And let's remember this, John, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light, who is it? Jesus. Let Jesus, let Jesus' life so emanate from within you that people will see good works. There's none good but God. They'll see God working through you, and God will get the glory for it. And, you know, I love the fact that it says in Colossians chapter 3 that when Christ, who is our life, appears, we'll appear with him in glory. We get to go along for the ride. Hey, Merry Christmas. If you missed the announcement, my granddaughter was born today around 2.30, Eleanor Roberts, and we're so thankful for the blessing. I pray you have blessed Christmas season, and we speak blessings over you all. The Lord willing, we'll be back, Car Church, next Sunday night. Uh, or whenever you watch this. Let your light shine. Let Jesus shine through you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight.